Welcome to HBO Lax. This is Lizzie Pace. And this is Catherine Dudas. We are the two foremost TV film pop culture experts in the universe. And yes. welcome to our book club. For welcome. today's book, it's The Last of Us Season 1, Episode 3, or Chapter 3. No. Yeah, the book is Season 1 of The Last of Us. <laughs> the chapter is Episode 3. Yeah, we have to make this seem as legit as possible. People are <laughs> We have to make it seem like it's really it is a book club, guys. We're just tricking we're gaslighting you. Yeah. It's a book. It's a chapter three. I, I think that's an important part of this. It is. Uh, this episode was directed by Peter Hoare, written by Craig Mazin. And Catherine, was this the saddest chapter of this book so far? I sobbed. I sobbed, Lizzie. I was sobbing with my dog. On, and my dog gets kind of annoyed when I cry because, like, my she's on top of me. And then I start shaking. And she just looks at me like side eye, like judging. And I'm like, are you watching this? Aww. This is the most. You're supposed to be emotionally supporting. Exactly. Me. And she's like, geez. She's just, yeah. the, uh, oh, my gosh, Lizzie. I fucking bawled. <laughs> like for a good amount of this episode um and like like it was so beautiful uh I cannot wait to talk about this I thought it was I I I thought it was the best movie I've seen all year I fucking it was a it was just I thought it was just a masterpiece I was I can't believe this was a fucking video game. I can't. This is a video game, <laughs> right? I I was wondering the whole time. I was like, where in the video game I does know. this? Uh, Do we have this whole <laughs> like beautiful, like, most I, beautiful romantic comedy I've ever seen? Uh, I've seen ever. I guess maybe not really comedy, but r- romantic. It gave the Notebook a run for its money. I'll tell you that. That was fucking. I and know. exactly like the whole thing was beautiful. Like and also the guy from the White Lotus. There's flowers everywhere. I didn't realize it was the guy from the White Lotus until. Oh my god, Catherine! I, I didn't in, realize it until, until you're like telling me. Until like the fourth me. scene, I was like, "Who is this guy? I know this guy." What? I was like, "This is." I then I. It's the for first season. The hotel guy. He is an amazing actor. Wait, I hope I'm right about that, but I'm he I'm like pretty American. sure it is him. It is him. Okay, great. Murray Bartlett, amazing. I cannot believe that that's. Him. Oh my gosh, he was amazing because I was like he's I was like because he was so hot and I was like I feel like I've seen this hot gay guy before. I was like, yes, this feels he, he feels was familiar. Very sexy. That's he, what you want to find in the bottom of your pit. You I was know? about to say, lucky universe, you brought you the the sexiest man alive into your yeah into your pit. <laughs> yes oh my god well let's get into it it. yeah we start with joel and ellie even though they're not we're not with them for the entire time but we have joel rinsing his bloody knuckles in this river and then he stacks some river rocks i was like this is something he used to do with his kid i don't know there was something sad about about it um and we're 10 miles west of boston and ellie and joel are not talking to each other uh, you know, Joel's responding kind of in grunts, throws her some food begrudgingly. Mm-hmm. And meanwhile, Ellie is continuing her her, her rumspringa awakening. She's like, I've never been in a forest before. I know, truly. <laughs> um, and then she was like, I was not going to say I'm sorry. Um, no. And then she gives him this very, I, I loved this, like very um, well thought out, smart little speech of like, you made a choice. Let's just let's just air this out immediately. Let's just talk about it. This is not my fault. Very adult. I did not make you make this choice. And he just like silently is like, yeah, yeah, fucking right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is a very mature child. Um, she really, yeah, yeah, which kind of needed to and be. He's said. like five hour hike. She's like, no problem. I I would have been like, no sir, <laughs> pass, <laughs> pass on that. That sounds like five hikes task. combined <laughs> together. That's not one hike. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's five seven, over five weeks uh, in LA. Yeah, I stretch out over Running <laughs> Canyon. Um, I loved. This you know, next I didn't scene. know Runyon was a loop for a long time. Wait, why? Oh, because you go up and go back. I down? just didn't get far enough. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's so funny. If you get it's far enough steep. to realize it's a loop. It's steep. Anyway, anyway, um, they cross this pretty bridge. And Joel's like, we're going to Bill and Frank. Ellie's like, are they nice? And he's like, Frank is. And Ellie starts to pry. 
how'd you get that scar? And he's like, someone shot me and missed. And I, yeah, I did shoot them back. I also missed. I, I didn't really understand this line. She was like, do you suck at shooting or in general? Oh, I thought what? um I thought he was just like another joke at him or like another little. Oh. I thought she, she was or she was trying to she's get razzing information, him. razzing him and also trying to get information about guns. She sees she's we, even more of this episode like she is really fixated on on guns and wanting one. Yeah, so maybe she's trying she to get him more information. Gun free gun nut gun nut baby. She second amendment <laughs> <obsessed>. says. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, they get to a like gas station thing called Cumberland Farms, and Joel's like, "I stash some supplies here in case I'm ever out of gear along his routes." He can't find it. She plays. Uh, what does she? She plays Pac Man. What does she play? No. Um, something where Melina has monster teeth and barks <laughs> out your bones. I don't yeah. know. Uh, this yeah. is some sort of video game homage. Yeah, for okay, the gamers. Yes. For the gamers, not for us. We're too cute. Um, uh, not for cute girls, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's not for us, but I can appreciate I it. I can totally see how someone would like that. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Ellie uh, heads down uh, into the basement, um, finds a little trap door. Um, in, uh, down there, she finds the fucking, a jackpot of tampons, which when she found that, I was like, I was like, oh, right. Oh my God. Not having access to (laughs) tampons. Oh my God. That's, that really is the apocalypse. That gave me like PTSD of an apocalypse I didn't. (laughs) I was like... (laughs) That was a nightmare I once had. <laughs> well, uh, well, okay. First of all, why is she lowering herself down into this? I guess she hasn't seen Barbarian. Yet. Yeah, ridiculous. And she, she just, she is really fearless. And I hate that she didn't tell him where she was going. I guess I don't know if she wanted to like. Yeah, find why wouldn't you stuff tell him? without him or something? I don't know. I don't know what what, what yeah. this whole sequence that's coming. This whole scene, I'm like, why? I would make Pedro Pascal come with me literally Absolutely. everywhere, Every- <laughs> shirtless. Yes, <laughs> literally, like I'm not peeing alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hello, have you oh. seen what's out there? <laughs> oh my gosh, it's crazy. No, she is. This episode, yeah, really made me be like, this girl is fucking brave because she sees a mute the one of the zombies alive but stuck under rubble and she gets closer to it while i'm screaming at my tv um not and relatable re- not relatable unrelatable queen uh she takes she's out her so knife. unrelatable this whole so, scene except for grabbing scene. the tampons <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, but she- can you imagine like you just you have to deal with all of that stuff and you're just free bleeding all the time. Oh my God. Are you ki- Yeah. Oh, awful. And dealing with hormones. And I was just saying to Lizzie, I, I, just, liter- I, just started like, I literally phase. thought through this. I was like, I didn't get my period until I was 15. So if I were Ellie, I would have one more year. You have one more year. I know. Peace. Oh, it's so sad. Oh, oh yeah. You're in God. your luteal phase. I'm in my luteal phase. So like, uh, you know, I, I, that's why I really cried today yeah um, i'm in my I, period phase so that's why i cried yeah too. it's just like it's the whole month honestly <laughs> i'm a woman i, I yeah guess. really yeah um uh, she cuts the um open the above the eyebrow and then stabs it you know why? i thought this was really weird and then i was like <laughs> you know what Make sure he's really dead so he can't attack either of them. And she should be practicing killing on things that, like, like this thing is trapped so she can get used to killing. Oh, Lizzie, she's, smart. You know, now she's... That is smart. Now she's in the open. Yeah. She's got to be stabbed. <laughs> she's in the open. That's, That's a good point. she's horny for guns. Yeah. <laughs> no, it makes sense. This is... And it makes, it, 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 it makes sense that we're tracking her uh, evolution as a... Uh, you know, fighter, fighter, a uh, survivor, survivalist. Um, yeah. So she kills the zombie um, and doesn't tell Joel. They have a cute little banter. Um, we go outside. They see this like airplane crash. Oh, shit. When Ellie finds a trash can in the basement and puts it up against the wall, flipped upside down so that she can get back out of the trap. That was my... 
most video game moment of the week. Oh, interesting. Wait, why? I like, oh, I've yeah, never you gotta, really you played gotta, video like, games. Use your surrounding. You gotta use your surroundings to like be oh. crafty. Oh wait, actually, I had one that's better. But that's good. I'm glad never you pointed that out though, because I would it not have thought one. about that. That's good. Um. Oh wow. Um. Yeah. So they walk by a plane. She asked Joel if she if he's ever flown in one, and he was like. Sh- you know, a few times I was like, uh, uh, and she's like, you're lucky. And he was like, no, I was in a middle seat, 12 bucks for a sandwich. And she's like, you're in, you were in the sky, which is the appropriate response to, yeah, to that. Yeah. Um, and he didn't child. even fly during 2023. Exactly. <laughs> it's gotten much, much it's gotten worse. It's gotten so much worse. <laughs> yeah. You guys are lucky. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, she starts asking about how everything came crashing so down in one day. And I'm like, wait, what? She doesn't know this. She's like eating in restaurants and flying planes. How did it even start? Who bit the first person? I bet it was a monkey. He's like, I thought you went to school. And he, she's like, Fedra school. And it didn't say how the shitty government failed to prevent a pandemic. And this was my hits too close to home <laughs> moment of the week. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good pick for that. <laughs> I was, I know, when she said I was that talking, sentence, I, was like, I was talking to my friend and he was like, I don't really like post-apocalypse stuff I used to, but now it feels too real. And I was of like, course. yeah. Of course. That first scene um, in the first, like, yeah, every, every pandemic mention in this uh, series has been uh, upset, really deeply upsetting. Um, and this explanation <laughs> of like what he of how it happens was all too realistic. I'm like, yeah, it's super plausible. The whole thing about the it. Okay, wait, well, this was actually this was good to know because I was wondering like, okay, it started um, in Indonesia, but then how did it get to that the neighbor so quickly or whatever? And then he explains yeah. that the thing was in the wheat or the flour. Um, uh, and it went, and then yeah. he says it was in the, the pancake cordyceps mix. Cordyceps mutated. Yeah, the pancake. And he was oh sad. My God. Sad reference. Sad to his, oh, to his daughter. Yes, that was my sad reference. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, he says they started biting Friday night, September twenty six, two thousand three. And Ellie's like, that makes more sense than the monkeys. Yeah. And Joel tries to take this shortcut so that. They don't go by this whole pit of dead bodies. Oh, my God. Joel basically was like, this what soldiers went through the countryside and evacuated small towns, bringing them to QZs if there was room, or else they murdered them. Yeah. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Cool, cool, cool. Cool. Uh, yeah. This was... And, yeah, one of those things that seemed, you know, seems plausible. It felt very World War II. I mean, it, you know holocaust reminders and which were referenced later mm-hmm. on joel says that dead people can't be infected is the reason and we see these dead baby bones mm. in a rainbow blanket and we cut oh. to september 30th 2003 and see the alive baby in its mother's arms waiting to get on this truck oh. where all of these soldiers are stacking people oh my god oh my god really yeah that fucking it gets sadder it gets even sadder yeah they're they're basic they're um you know marking the they're all the soldiers are going through all the houses making sure no one's there and then we meet our hero bill um survivalist extraordinaire (laughs) basically ron swanson (laughs) is this character yes (laughs) (laughs) which i love and then you you know you see that he's in his bunker and uh, that he has a gun and he's waiting and he's basically waiting uh, for the soldiers to clear his house. And they do. They are like, OK, no one's in here. And it, like it, it goes to a wide shot to reveal like more of his where he's living. And then he's like, not today. You new world order. You new Jack world order. Jack boot, boot fucks. fucks. I was like, <laughs> yeah, it was. But I like couldn't like I was so when that when they cut to that and I was like, oh, my God. Of course, of course, because there are survival. Like, of course, we would. It's the most interesting thing to track someone who actually did prepare for it. <laughs> like, and then he was there right. Was the spinoff of Walking Dead, Fear the Walking Dead, started with a group of preppers. Really, that basically. makes oh, that makes so yeah. much sense. It's who really had like gone off the land? Yeah, dude. Um, 
Yeah, we see shots a lot of the prepper things, sulfuric acid, uh, and he emerges under from the secret chest of drawers in his house, and he's wearing his gas mask. And then he walks outside in front of his house, which is very nice and cute. So cute. And takes his mask off. And he's the only man in town. And it's Nick Offerman, Ron Swanson. I know. I love that reveal. It was so good. It was so good. Uh, really good. Um, and then he gets he, to fucking uh, He gets right to business. Yeah. <laughs> I love this sequence. This sequence. I fucking love, like watching someone do survival stuff but they're not exactly explaining it so you have to just like be thinking about okay yeah that's for that and okay he's getting the gas and he's getting yeah like, uh, okay and then watching got- someone do survival shit as an idiot who <gasps> has idiot no who survival could- stuff <laughs> who so doesn't satisfying. even have a jug of water in their house <laughs> I have like one chickpea can left. <laughs> I've had make an earthquake kit on my to-do list for like a year. <laughs> it is so nice Maybe to see Maybe this will so motivate prepared. me. I know, Maybe honestly, not. yeah. Um, and it's so interesting because, yeah, just thinking about, you know, when you He steals have... his neighbor's boat. Right. I'm like, how long has he been thinking about doing that That's for? Point, Was that yeah. just part of the plan the whole time? <laughs> Um, he's he he's using the whole town's resources to his advantage, which is so smart. And then he gets wine because he's like, I'm gonna get fucking drunk if I'm gonna be the last man on earth. Um, mm-hmm. It's just so great. I yeah, loved this. He figures out the generator. It was really funny when the power shuts down. He's like, that was fast. Oh, yeah, that was funny. <laughs> that was so funny. Oh, there's so... God, this fucking... This deserves... This episode deserves a fucking Emmy. Um, I agree. Oh, my gosh. It was so good. It was so good. Um, he... And so, like, you're just watching him alone, but you're just, like, riveted. So riveted. And he, like, breaks into Home Depot, and he... Uh, drives his tractor down the street. He's cutting a tree with a saw. He's, He's setting these traps around the, his fence, which we don't know like how they work really yet. He picks up a carrot. He's got farm to table now. He's, got He's feeding some chickens. Killed a There's pig. There's a big animal corpse. Yeah, oh, he... it was a pig. Oh, I, I don't know. I assumed. Um, yeah, and then and then we cut to him in his beautiful rustic kitchen, making a delicious meal, and is just enjoying it with you know candlelight. And the oh wine. my god, him eating this like steak, drinking by himself was very Ron Swanson. It was literally there is like this, there's like a scene in the Archer Rack where that's like his dream, yeah, like thing. And then he's what? Oh, and then he gets an alert. This is so cool, and we see how he did his whole system, and we we watch a zombie person uh, trigger, like go go past a wire, and then it triggers a shotgun into his head, and Bill is like never gets old. <laughs> Bill is like never gets shit home. fucking rocks. He's a one man sitcom. Oh my gosh, so good. He has programmed this gate four years later, and he's driving his truck with a boat trailer. We see his "Don't Tread on Me" poster. Yep. We see him wheel, uh, wheel, welding. I was like wielding. Oh yeah, welding. Uh, and then another alarm goes off. He goes to check it. It's his pit alarm. And there is a person in the pit, and they say, I'm not infected. And we look down, and we see they're not infected. They're sexy. <laughs> oh my god it's like christmas day it's it's, it's oh not, my it's, god he uh, caught a good he caught a 10 he caught a 10 <laughs> oh my god are you kidding me and, oh my god what a, yeah it's christmas fucking morning uh santa brought you a, a sexy man star of the white lotus season one um uh who he He's really honest. He says that he came with 10 people, uh, but now it's just him. He's trying to get bo- to Boston and from the Baltimore QZ, which is gone. And we see Bill give him a ladder. Yeah, and he, Bill. Bill at this point has multiple guns on his person and yes. this ribbon of bullets across his chest. Also, it was cute. Oh, I, like, I liked the moment where he was like, why? He was like, "Do you, are you armed? And then he was like, a pause. He's like, no. And he was like, why did you pause then? And he was like, because I thought oh, yeah. about lying. Like, that was cute. Like, it was just so. Yeah, it was like a meet cute. It was a good meet cute. cute. Yeah, with him like pointing a gun at him. Um, and 
yeah, he he decides to help him out. Um, and then he checks him with a device thing, the tester. Um, and he's like, "Where did you get that?" Um, and he is ne- he, he is not infected. Hmm. Hmm, interesting. And then he appoints the way to Boston. And a sexy guy says, I'm really hungry. And I'm really hungry. My name is Frank. Mm-hmm. Ooh, is this Frank of Bill and Frank? I, I know. That was a good them. moment. That was such a good moment. I was like, oh, yes. Um, Bill's like, I'm not an Arby's. And I, if, if I feed you, everyone will come here for free food. He's like, he's like, Arby's didn't have free food. It, it's a restaurant. <laughs> Cute. So cute. And then he promises he won't tell anyone about this place, and you know I'm a bad liar. And and P- Bill is like, you are sexy. I will let you in. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you can have a shower if you yes. want to be naked in my place. There's definitely no cameras in there. <laughs> I'm definitely not a camera freak. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely... <laughs> oh, my God. That's so funny. <laughs> Um, Bill, when he's in the shower and he's like, can I have five more minutes? Thank you. This was amazing. It was like, it was really nice. It It killed me. And the way Bill just walked into the, like the second Bill walked into the room, Nick Offerman's performance. Oh, just he's, he should win an Emmy um, for this. He, the way he puts the clothes down and the way you could, you just knew in that moment, you're like, tender. Mm. You're like, you're like, he likes him and he is like, cause it's like this like tough guy. And then you all of a sudden see the softness, like immediately of this like wide eyed, like kind of like a kicked injured dog being like, Oh yeah. You know, it was so sweet. Yeah. When he puts the clothes down, that was almost my horniest moment. I was like, <laughs> oh, oh, it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> but thank God we get even the best horniest moments I've ever experienced in my life. So oh, um, uh, I'm he, so excited. He makes him this elaborate meal. It's rabbit. And Frank notices that he's smart enough to pair it with a blue boujolet. And then he's uh, like, I know I don't seem like the type. And Frank's like, no, no, you do. And that is how we both. That was the gay code, I think. That was the gay, I think code. That was the gay code. It was. Yes. Definitely. You do. So good. Uh, and he, Frank fills fills up his tummy, and then is like, "Wait, I'm gonna be going, but where did you get that antique piano?" And he goes over. And he's like, "It's he's worth so much," and he's like, "Well, not anymore." <laughs> that was <funny>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, "Well, apparently nothing." <laughs> oh yeah, he starts playing the Linda Ronstan song, and. It overwhelms Bill, and then he takes over and sings a be- sings so beautifully and tenderly so and softly, and, and it's just so nice. Frank goes, who's the girl you're singing about? Bill says, there is no girl, and Frank says, I know, oh, and he puts his hand on his shoulder and leans in to kiss him, and this was my horniest moment of the week. Oh my gosh, this was amazing this kiss was so beautiful i uh, uh, like it's like they looked deep inside me and they're like what's Catherine's biggest fantasy and then they made it in his life and i really <gasps> appreciate Aww. this this is like oh god i really hope my mom doesn't listen to this but yeah this <laughs> i don't think she um, I was, <laughs> I'm like, this is like my favorite thing ever but also it was just so sweet and you but it was also you could just feel the like oh my god when was the last time either of them like touched anyone or like definitely oh I mean, my god Bill's i wrote here anyone. bill looks like he ain't kissed in a minute yeah, yeah. <laughs> He clutches him. It's beautiful. Starving. This is where Frank produces tears. Yes. And then he says, go take a shower, Which Bill. Which loved. Lol. He immediately goes, yeah. I also was having that thought. I, I actually, I, I'm actually glad he said that because I was also wondering. I was like, well, you showered, but I hope. Then, yeah, he, he covered that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're blessed. Fewer showers during this time. Yeah, that's, yeah, makes sense. Um, then we're blessed with a shot of sexy Frank uh, in bed, uh, naked, under the covers, 
Bill comes out in a towel. What? I was like, are we, we're, we've been blessed. And then. <laughs> yeah. I was like, then, we're, we're seeing I, it. We're doing like, it. Like, oh, and then Frank undoes the, t- like, we're going there. He undoes the towel. Um, oh, and it's the undoing like, of the towel is sexy. So sexy. And then Frank gets in bed or Bill gets in bed. And Frank is like, um, have you ever done this before? And Bill's like, no. But he, like, did it with a girl, like, a while ago. And, yeah. And then Frank was like, uh, before you know, but before I do, I want you to know that I'm not a whore. So I'm going to stay a couple more days after this. And then we get to my horniest That moment. line was so weird to me. I didn't gonna really understand it either. I'm like, so wait, does that make you not a whore? If you stay a few So years? you are? This is sex work? I was like, because that, that does feel like know. sex work. Yeah, I was like, that, I don't know. That yeah. was a little unclear. But he went, you know, he gets to stay a couple more days and then stay you know yeah um and then seems to pay off frank goes down on bill in my horniest <gasps> moment of the week ah uh, so that's good. a good one it, uh, <laughs> amazing. almost almost gave, gave alby a run for his money um uh <laughs> yeah this was just really sweet. i'm gonna come i'm coming <laughs> masterpiece um yeah this was just really really well done and like so and honestly just like I don't know. Have we ever seen ever seen two like hyper masculine looking men have a love scene like with implication of sex on screen ever? I, I mean, don't maybe. Know. I mean, maybe. I know I have I in my remember. my certain incognito windows. <laughs> I mean, oh on my, my god, screens. we're not talking about Catherine's. I, we're not talking about my. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do that in my search history. <laughs> But yeah, so I thought, yeah, I mean, you know, it, it kind of goes without saying that this is, yeah, just really top notch representation. Yeah, I'm like, trying yeah. to think. I just don't. I mean, I guess Brokeback Mountain, but not, uh, I don't know. This but they're one, not old. They were but like But they're not old. Young. And also, like, I just feel like the look of someone like Nick Offerman. That was, was hot, though. Oh, yeah, oh that, was, that was amazing. Yeah. Oh, um. <laughs> anyway. We, but anyway. that was like the hyper masculine type. That's anyway, true. we have gone. Anyway, we've Ooh, got a little. Is it hot in here? <laughs> I know oh all our God. listeners at home are also fanning themselves, so it, we're not alone. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, Frank goes down. Three years later, we see them in a fight. Uh, Frank is saying to Bill, do I ever ask for things? It's not for me. Bill's like, who cares what they look like? And Frank's like, our, a home isn't just our house. He basically wants to beautify the neighborhood. And Bill says, Frank, uh, you li-, or Frank says, you live in a psycho bunker. The government are all Nazis. And Bill's like, the government are all Nazis. He's like, yeah, now, but not then. <laughs> best line of the episode though that was the best line exchange of the episode that was so, so funny good <laughs> I don't know. so good like just for sure. he's like well yeah <laughs> now <laughs> like yeah it really worked out you knew it was coming <laughs> that was hilarious that was so funny they yeah. just like they took I, what i love about the right the what the writers do is they take um i feel like an improv um, we taught we say this a lot is like using every part of the buffalo, which is ba- taking maybe this is just mm. a writer's term in general, but like taking an idea and just wringing every little thing you can get out of it, and like yeah, just like exploring y- that line has to be in there. Like it's just like otherwise you're not yeah. using all the parts of the buffalo. Um, anyway, and just yeah. like this fight, yeah. like he wants to fix up the shops, yeah. the wine shop, the, the furniture store, and cl- clothing boutique. It's like. Oh, yeah, of course. This guy was living by himself. He's not into that kind of stuff. But, like, then he comes to appreciate it. And that's how they both benefit each other in their relationship. Oh, it's so No, yeah, because Frank is, it's it's like he's being like, yeah, like, we're li- we're surviving, but I want to live. And, like, to me, living is, yeah, is we're like, gonna taking have care friends. of the things that I love. Yes, and then, we're, and then he's like, we're going to have friends. And Bill's like, what? Mm. Where? And Frank's like, oh, I've been talking to a lady on the radio. And he's like, What? <laughs> um, and then we cut to um, a little garden party with um, the four, with um, Bill and Frank and Tess and Joel. And this is what? This is 2010, I think, at this point. Uh, I don't know. Wait, hold on. I, I, three I think years says, later from. Wait, three years later. Uh, it was like four years later. Oh, no. I feel like it, this was 2010. Three years later, 
Wait. Wait. Okay, so it was 2003 where... And then I think There's Frank came in 2007. Babies. I think Frank came in 2007. I don't know. I think four God, years later, and then I think it was three years later. I think this is 2007. Yeah, and then three years later, after the blowjob. <laughs> From, it is 2010, yes. Um. Well, Joel definitely seems a little happier. Tess is, uh, looks her hair. Tess's hair is different. A little younger. Um and oh really bill funny. is insisting on ho- holding oh the gun at him the whole time they're just such a good odd frank's couple. just trying to have a normal yeah frank's trying to have a normal dinner and they're like their dynamic together feels so much like they're married and this yes, is like so the living. tension that they're playing out yes and yeah. basically they're discussing like helping each other by getting each other stuff from the other person's place uh, Tess and... Oh, Frank wants to show Tess something inside, so it's just Joel and Bill, and Joel's like, we're decent people, uh, we can help each other, what are you, a prepper? And Bill says, survivalist, we're <laughs> self-sufficient, we don't need you complicating our lives, and Joel, very smart, was like, you know, that fence has one year left, I can get you ten spools of aluminum, last forever. So smart. So good. Um, and then, yeah, he... And then makes, you know, he's like, you know, last forever or like, you know, implying that like you want to take care of your boyfriend too. And that's mm-hmm. what Bill's soft spot is. And so we just, and yes, yeah. oh, we see Frank give Tess something and sh- and use these codes for the radio, the decades. Mm-hmm. We find out. So that's where codes. this started. Mm hmm. Um, and then Joel warns Bill that um, you will be, uh, there'll be raiders. Seems like you're good on all the other f- fronts. Um, and they'll come at night, quiet and armed. And Bill's like, we'll be fucking fine, man. I protect this house. Now I see why Joel was like, Frank is nice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh, and then we do 2013, three years later. So you nailed it, Catherine. Go. Wow. I'm so good at math. Good job. Um. And then we have our boys. Frank and Bill are running. on a run. They're on a run. It's so cute. Um, uh, Bill is dying, which is really relatable. So relatable. Bill is so relatable in this app. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> Frank undoes a blindfold around Bill's eyes and reveals that he made a garden of strawberries by trading a small gun for a packet of seeds with Tess and Joel. Yeah. And they both eat cheers strawberries and laugh cry and it's like it's, this is a gorgeous it's a moment beautiful moment and the light is so perfect nice. and like the, the them tasting the strawberries and like again the way the bills like joy like the way nick offerman is so good in this episode he just brings this like oh the softness is is just so sweet and rewarding to watch him do that and yeah this shot is perfect because it's just like the sun is at the perfect place spot and it's just beautiful um and bill what does bill says like oh i'm sorry Um, he says i'm sorry i'm getting older faster than you which is like kind of not what happens yeah and he said i never was afraid before you and they kiss and i never was afraid before you oh i think maybe this was the first time i cried maybe this was maybe this was number one this is Um, and then we have a rainstorm and the raiders show up to ruin this fucking beautiful tale mm -hmm. and we hear gunshots and explosions they've tripped the sensor frank runs for bill finds a gun in the drawer and runs outside and finds Bill already shooting them. And there are all these men on fire. This I don't know sequence, what exactly he's rigged. This sequence was my video game moment of the week of of the camera following mm. Frank going out. And then we and then we see we're seeing it all from his point of view. Um, the, and like and even though the crux of the action is taking place to Bill, but we're seeing it from the view point of frank which i feel like is very video game um and because hmm. tv you'd normally it would the point of view would be on the person that the action is happening to you know um hmm. uh i could be wrong but anyway so he uh bill is shot um and frank gets him on the table and bill's like 
I wrote down all the things. He thinks he's going to die. And, like, I, you know, wrote it down a list. And Frank's like, you're going to be okay. And he gets alcohol. And he's kind of taking the bullet out. And then it looks like Bill dies. But he doesn't. He just loses yeah. consciousness. And he says, call Joel. So it's like, mm-hmm. I guess Joel is their best friend. Yeah, he's their bestie. Oh, I wrote here, Bill dies. He doesn't, though. <laughs> yeah. It's like House of the Dragon all over again. <laughs> <laughs> Bill brings Frank inside. He's in a wheelchair. It seems like he's maybe had a stroke. This is 2023. Um, so this is 10 years later? Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. So 10, years, 10 later. years later. And quite a bit of aging has happened. Um, yeah, it seems like um, he had a stroke. Because um, I was thinking, I was like, is it cancer? But it like, or like he lost function of his, yeah, they didn't really mm. specify. Um and it's really sweet. Frank is painting oh, the flowers beautiful. in the greenhouse. Beautiful painting. And obviously, he's won some of the arguments about resource management. Yes. <laughs> he's persuasive. And, oh, God. There's a painting of Bill. There's multiple paintings Gorgeous of Bill. Gorgeous paintings. So good. Mm. Um, and uh, they're at the dining room table oh, at a meal. First, Bill's, we like, see this. We see Bill... F- um, watering these flowers this pot of flowers that i th- mm. it's interesting because i totally noticed it when he we, we really the camera lingers for a second but i didn't think anything of it and then when we say the flowers later i was like mm, that's why they the one because they show the flowers later oh. to show time has passed like how much that a lot of time like to show like it's dead i'm like oh it's so good so smart um yeah and yeah they have dinner um he asks him uh frank if he took his pills he's like fine and you know, it takes the pills. One orangey, One big orangey, whitey, whitey, big roundy. So oh, God, he their love. So <laughs> Bill puts Frank to bed. Uh, it's just so sweet. And then when he wakes up, Frank is sitting up. And Bill's like, what are you doing? I don't want you to fall asleep in the chair. Your feet will get blue. And Frank's like, well, I prom- I'm going to stay up because this is my last day. And that is Frank telling Bill that he, yeah, doesn't want to do this anymore. And Bill is like, but what about if a doctor comes? And he's like, what are you talking about? Um, and he, uh, Frank's like, there wasn't a cure to this before the world fell apart. And I've made up my mind. And this, God, I bawled a lot. I cried, I think, during this oh, whole scene. Oh, God. <laughs> Bill crying on the couch. Oh, my God. And Frank says, I'm not going to say every day is a wonderful gift from God. There were bad days with you, too, but more good days with you than anyone else. Oh, God. Oh this my God. had me. It was Give really... me one more good day. Oh, Starting my gosh. Now, make and me some can... toast. Take me to the boutique where I'll pick outfits out for us. We'll get married. <sighs> So yeah, and then and then you'll make me a meal and then put crush up the pills and put it in my wine. And Bill's like, I can't. And Frank's like, if you love me, love me in the way I'm asking you to. Oh God. <laughs> this just this was rough. And then we see a beautiful little montage of them at the piano in their suits, putting rings on each other. And oh, it's just beautiful. And then he, we see Bill make Frank the same meal that oh, <laughs> is no. just destroyed. <laughs> the same wine, and I am just losing it. <laughs> I, yeah, like, I wrote here. This is too sad. I start sobbing. <laughs> <laughs> um, Bill mixes in the drugs into Frank's glass. Frank's like, "Will it be enough?" Bill's like, "Yeah." And Frank chugs it, and then Bill chugs his, and Frank goes, were there already pills in the bottle? And you know what? It's going to be a murder, double suicide. Murder, double suicide. I was wondering, I thought when he was pouring the powder into the wine, I was like, he's going to put the other half in his. Like, I was like, or he was going to, I don't know. I was like waiting for something like that, and then I loved the way they did that. When he was like, oh, there's already, it's already in there. And like the way they, the way Frank knew was how bill like chugged it and he was like oh yeah like such a good such good storytelling just so well done i know such know, i mean they know each other so well yeah they do and it's and just oh and frank's like oh i don't like bill, this but that's romantic 
<laughs> yeah. yeah. Bill is like, it's not a tragic suicide at the end of a play. I'm old yeah. and satisfied. You were my purpose. Um, and then they hold hands and they laugh, cry, take me to bed. Ugh. This was like, honestly, I was, I was like, that was the right move, Bill. I honestly, if I was Bill, I would probably do the same. Oh, that's, you know, we're not proponents of double suicides on this uh, on this show, on this podcast. I have already said I think I would already be de- dead. By uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I guess yeah. <laughs> In this situation, this is but like the best I don't way to know. Go. This is kind of hope. It's like, well, if you could live Bill and Frank's life, it's not too bad. It's not. I mean, it's beautiful. It's it was, and they and I think yeah, what Bill did was just really beautiful. It's like, well, like what else? I don't want. Yeah, I don't want to live my life. I don't want to live without you. And honestly, they probably had the most beautiful deaths and most fulfilling lives of anyone on the planet at that point. Like, yeah, like, for real. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, you know, they really won the lottery. And then, yeah, like, you know, fall in love. Like, he just falls into his pit and they fall in love. Just really fucking beautiful. Yeah. Um, and that was the end of this love story that just ruined me. <laughs> wrecked us. Oh, my God. <laughs> Absolutely wrecked us. <laughs> Yeah, like, like chest shaking. <laughs> socks. Like I chest. feel like if I weren't on meds right now, I would have had like notebook level cries. Yeah. <laughs> I was. I honestly was really glad I didn't do my makeup for the pod before. The I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> um, <laughs> before I watched it, it's um, okay. I a couple of days ago, I was telling Catherine this, but a, a child like said hello to me when I was on my walk and introduced me to her dog and. It was so cute and pure moment, and I just started sobbing after I walked away. <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't take much, let's say. That's so funny. Oh, my God. Oh, uh, wow, that's so pure. That's really, that's so lovely. Uh, we see Joel and Ellie approach the gate of this town. Oh, man. We're too late. Bittersweet. Yeah. Uh, punch in the code. Walk to Bill's house. And Joel sees the dead flowers outside. He knows what's up. Yeah. And the door's unlocked. The candles have melted down. Ellie's like, what the fuck? I and know. then Ellie is like obsessed with this house and it's just like yeah. has never seen a house before. <laughs> yeah, honestly, probably has not seen something this it's, nice. Yeah. And um, Joel looks for them. They he tries explore. to get into the bedroom. Um, Ellie finds an envelope and uh, starts reading it. And then Joel comes in and she says it said to whomever or probably but probably Joel. And it came with this key and Joel's like and acquiring this car key was my most video game moment of the week oh yeah this actually was it okay acquiring the vehicle I feel like is like a checkpoint in a game yes that makes a lot of sense oh wow so good um Ellie starts reading um the letter which says do not come into the bedroom we left a window open to the house when smell which I was wondering I was like why doesn't Joel smell dead bodies um so I uh, guess yeah the the window helps um he's like this is probably Joel oh you because pro- <laughs> anyone else would have been blown up by one of my traps he 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 this made me laugh so much I fucking me love too that. um and he's like I didn't like you but we're friends almost and I respect you so I'm going to tell you something because you're probably the only person who will understand. Um, mm. I used to hate the world and I was happy when everyone died. Wow. Incel energy. Um, but I was wrong because there was one person worth saving. And I saved him. Mm. And that's what I did. Um, and then, uh, you know, she is about to say he's about he basically says, like, we are there are men this is why men are like me and you are here we have a job to do and god help any motherfuckers who stand in our way um you have to protect tess but she doesn't say it because it's painful and yeah he's like he leaves all his weapons and and equipment use them to keep tess safe and then joel is like just made it even fucking sadder oh so sad oh and you i really honestly that was like when i really felt joel's like I cry. That was another crying moment. I was like, "Oh, Tess, oh poor Joel. Tess was yeah, so great. He's lost he's everyone. Lost so many people. 
Um, and then he walks, he walks outside, overwhelmed. He goes into the garage. He sees the truck. And then he opens the fridge and <laughs> I this, this was my stuff to make a battery. A, should have been a survivalist moment of the week. <laughs> I'm like, I have no idea what any of this means. Yeah, I guess it's, the, it's he explains. He's like, okay, I, I'm making a battery. He opened the trunk. I was like, is there no battery yeah, there? Yeah. I guess like, on, is what I'm know, looking Joel. at. <laughs> like, <Fill us> in. <laughs> what? What's to see here? <laughs> It's like, oh, obviously there's no car. I assumed there was no car battery because Joel's obsessed with car batteries. So right, right, That's, uh, he's, he's obsessed. He will not stop talking about it. Uh, <laughs> uh, and Joel says to Ellie, "I'm going to Wyoming. My brother used to be a firefly. Maybe he knows where some of them are, and can get you to the lab. And there's rules. You cover up. You never bring up Tess." Oh God! Mm, that's so sad. <laughs> this is uh, God. It's not really healthy. And no, yeah. and we keep our histories to ourselves. Okay, he's he's hardening up again, you know. Yeah. And rule two: don't tell anyone about your condition. They'll shoot you. Rule three: do what I say. And we grab what we can, and they go in his bunker. And Ellie's like, "Holy shit! This guy was a genius!" And if. <laughs> And there's an alarm. If he didn't reset this countdown every three weeks, it would play 80s music. Okay, so maybe the 80s so music came from that. Yeah. Mm. And there's a wall of guns. Ellie stocks up toilet paper. She finds women's shirts. And then she takes a shower. She fucks with this clock and breaks it. Mm-hmm. Um, and she finds a small gun in the desk drawers and hides it. Mm-hmm. Very important. Very important. So now Ellie is armed, which I'm sure will not come up later. Um, no. No. We're never going to see that we'll gun never again. See that again. <laughs> um, and then we have such a cute moment of Ellie getting into the car and like being in a car for the first time. And it was so cute. She's like, it's like a spaceship. And she's. Her little yeah. face is so cute and happy. Um, and yeah, then he's like seatbelt, and she like doesn't know what that means. She doesn't know what the seatbelt <gasps> is. And he's oh, she's too, she's too young. She's too young. She was bored in the aftertimes. Uh, and she's like, this is so cool. And then she takes out a cassette and puts it in. And it's the Linda Rodstadt song oh and god he really likes it and she's like well i guess it's, better it's than all about it. like loving you forever and yeah. i'm gonna love you a long Gosh. time and also these shots like it's better than nothing sun. when yeah oh uh, oh yeah oh just really beautiful like i don't know the sun on their face really made you be like okay adventure they're like going off it's just really beautiful um and also and we pan oh, back yeah. the- through, from through the car window into the window of the lovers and we see the painting of Bill oh. as the curtain blows in the wind. Oh my God, such a good last shot. I was like, that's a brilliant last shot. Of course, that's what you end on. Oh, that makes me... But, um, oh. <laughs> it's so I think this good. is actually Catherine's horniest moment. <laughs> <laughs> it's my sad, horny moment. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh my gosh well guys um this i i, I mean i'm so, i was so excited to to do this recap because i'm like i'm so happy to relive this episode because i it, i just thought it was just amazing and so well done and it um, was I, it really it would affect me even if i wasn't in my luteal phase it would have it would have affected me <laughs> <laughs> certified <laughs> even if not even luteal. in your ovulatory phase <laughs> You- <laughs> <laughs> this would get you. <laughs> um, yeah, no, so, um, it was so good. And I had been thinking this week, I've been thinking about this show so much, like mm. between episodes. And I was like, is it going to feel like you're not developing like emotional stories because it's a video game and because just like it's pretty bleak and whatever. And it's like, no, they've developed a lot of very good emotional stories. It, and this one, yeah. I mean, I was sobbing. I couldn't believe how, in, how I couldn't believe how well written and just in, uh, how hooked I was the entire episode. 
how it went by so fast because I was just fucking hooked to every scene. Every yeah. scene was just so lived in. The acting, the directing, everything just felt. Yeah, I mean, pro- the the actors just k- absolutely killed it. Um, there's it. There's that little bit between Ellie and Joel where she says, "Is anything bad in there?" And he goes, "Just you." And they did that again in this episode. That was cute. Which they had done in the previous one. I was like, I love that. It feels so real because it's like, that's what you do with like your real friends is yes. you like repeat inside jokes all the time. And yes. And it reminded I, it me of felt his dynamic real. with his daughter was very like making fun of each yeah. other. Yeah. Like, razzin. Razzin. And so it's, yeah. Oh, God. Anyway, so yeah, I just hope you guys enjoyed it as much as we did. I'm just so happy that episode exists. I'm just, wow. I'm me too. Truly, really amazing. Um, can't wait for that next week. I don't know how they're gonna top this one. I don't. This is no. That's a tough one because it was just so so unique. If I were a writer on this show and I had to do the one after this episode, I'd be like, oh, (laughs) (laughs) come on, come on, (laughs) the Nick Offerman prepper gay love story oh uh, yeah i'm following okay. that <laughs> <laughs> oh my god no that's so true um well thank you all for joining thank us thank you for joining we'll us be wait, back wait, wait, wait. next week next oh, week what? i have to do my thing um oh. because we got a just more lovely reviews um i from moan wait mona v 19 White Lotus craving satisfied. I finished watching the White Lotus, but was craving more content about it. Decided to listen to this podcast. I was the only one I knew to recap the show from listening to Game of Roses. This was everything I needed and wanted and more. Lizzie and Catherine expertly just dissecting each moment was like watching the show over again in my head, but with behind the scenes commentary. This we, this should be like our ad. It was so easy to learn and laugh at the same time. Um, was a gore girl, now a lax lady. Thank you so much. Oh, <gasps> I this love was that. So sweet. That's a great ad. That was, I know I was like can we just put the, thank this, you like, another one just like should just be our website blurb so thank you so much that was really sweet thank you thank you to so everyone nice who's to left to us nice, really nice reviews I just I know it's it is really it is really time. sweet and it helps it helps people find it, it does. you know it really I try does. to do it for all my favorite podcasts yes cause, you know yeah it's good good I, for the algo it is I, I love podcasts. and for the soul I love pod I love and congrats on a new bachelor season starting up on on gore oh my god oh yeah like, if you are into the bachelor we've just started recapping zach shawcross's season oh, so uh one episode at game of roses oh, i get oh, so it's game time baby i love it oh the best pod. it's a good season too oh, so far yes it's just one episode but oh my gosh it's, i'm excited yes. <laughs> all right well thank you guys so much well, thank you all and look, look for the for light. For the light. <laughs> Wait, fuck. Wait, why can't we never remember Wait. if it's for or two? Wait, when you're in the darkness. <laughs> this happened last time, too. We, I know we this can't is so know. sad. I'm gonna keep when you're all lost this in. in the darkness, look for the light. It's Wait, okay. look for the light, okay. Catherine. Okay, we're going to do it again. I'm doing it right. <laughs> you are doing it right. I keep fucking up. Okay. Look, f- look for, for the, the light. light. <laughs> love you. <laughs> Jesus, love you. Love you. <laughs> <laughs>